broadcast of the FIDE World Team Chess Championship where India is fighting to qualify to the quarterfinals round 5 today the last round of the um um of <laughs> the last, <laughs> last round of the group stage <laughs> sorry about that and uh, india in a must win situation almost uh, i am your host samya swaminathan and with me is grandmaster abhimanyu puranik hi abhi hey samya Hey, so I am really excited to watch today's games. It's a very important match, and uh, I'm just hoping for some spicy games which go in our favor. So let's just hope it happens. Definitely. And do you think a draw would be enough, or do you think we have to win this match in order to qualify? So the situation is that uh, it's if we win, we definitely qualify because we need to be in the top four to qualify to the knockouts. But if we draw and israel doesn't win uh, then still we might qualify but to be on the safer side i feel that uh, it's better if we win definitely and we are playing against usa today usa uh, has won only one game so far in the group stage they won their first round match against poland and after that they lost the rest of the three rounds so i would say that our team is a favorite to win this match even though in chess kisi ka bhi uh, game kabhi bhi badal sakta hai you know as we saw yesterday um tab takdeer mein likha hai ha bahut uh, matlab evaluations and uh, positions uh, bahut jaldi change ho rahi hai especially faster time controls mein jaise hum dekhte aa rahe hai so um would you say uh, india has a uh, what would you say is the winning chance winning percentage for the indian team team today so when i'm looking at the pairings i feel like we are definitely the favorites and uh, so i would say that we should win by 2 and 1/2 1 and 1/2 i that's the score i would predict mm-hmm. and uh, let's just hope it happens because there are some very interesting matchups which i'm looking forward to seeing so do you want to talk about the matchup somya yeah. definitely so the pairings are such that vidit plays against neeman hans neeman on the top board and the uh, second board is nihal versus onish chuk nihal will be white third board is sl versus wahuyan uh, akobian sl being black and fourth board setu with the white pieces against kesada perez unieski what do you have to say about these lineups yeah very interesting matches uh, so there is hans against vidit which will be a very interesting game definitely and uh, i would like I, i think it will end in a draw because but let's see what happens because this is a rapid format anything can happen second board nihal is definitely the favorite and after yesterday's game he definitely will look forward to bounce back and come back strong so i hope so like nihal does well in this game then on third board we have akobian varuzan versus sl narayanan sl is black so i would say this is pretty much even uh, a pretty even matchup maybe sl is a favorite but considering it's he's black it won't be that easy and on fourth board we have setu setu raman sp playing against kesada perez unesky and the thing about this uh, 
all these american players their ratings might seem low but they are very solid very experienced grandmasters definitely there is no game will be a cake walk so uh, it's a we, i would say we are favorites but it won't be an easy match for sure yeah definitely and in fact uh, um Bahubian, uh, Akobian and Onish both of them are also coaches uh, they have been uh, they have played the role of the coach of the US um, national team men as well as women several times so um would you say opening could be one of their strengths i have seen that US players usually play a lot of um aggressive and creative opening openings because of the tournament structure in the USA True, true. They are all uh, very uh, well-versed theoreticians. Uh, but it will be interesting to see what, because we also have some quite some strong opening theoreticians in our team in India. So it will be definitely interesting to see who wins the opening phase of the game, as both sides are very competent in the, uh, that sense. I'm very interested to, as uh, the person I real, I'm really interested to see how he performs is Nihal, because after yesterday's game, which was quite heartbreaking. So he will definitely, he's, he doesn't seem like someone who is like very aggressive. He seems like a very calm dude, but I know him personally and he, he definitely, he has some fire in him and he will like to roar like a lion again. Definitely, uh, Abhimanyu. And uh, what about the fourth board? Setu Raman versus Uneski Quesada Perez. Uneski is actually from Cuba and he shifted federations a few uh, years ago, maybe three, four years ago. Uh, very strong grandmaster, 2600 in classical rating. Uh, what do you think about this lineup? Yeah, it's an interesting matchup. I remember a few, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, he won a very strong tournament, uh, one of those fall classic, sp spring classic tournaments. He was, he just crushed the field and those tournaments, trust me, are not easy. They have all these 20 strong 2600 players from all over the world, and he won that tournament. He's definitely a very strong player. Maybe he hasn't played as much in the recent years since the pandemic, but he's definitely not someone to be underestimated, Soumya. Yeah, and in fact, the Cuban team was playing quite well in the um, oh. Olympiad as well, even though uh, Unieski already shifted to the US by then, but his brother uh, was in part of the Cuban team in the Olympiad, which did much better than their seeding. True, true. They were very under. They were a very underrated team, and uh, yeah, this will be an interesting game for sure. As Setu, as we know, he also didn't have a great start, and knowing him too, he will really like to come back very strong. And he's an aggressive player. He's not someone who will play like simple, solid chess, trying to grab chances. He's someone who like to go all guns blazing against his opponent. So it's very interesting to see how he will approach this game. Yeah, and I think Setu uh, with the white pieces is even more dangerous. I've seen him uh, play, uh, like, you know, he knows a lot of uh, latest opening theory as well. So I have actually seen him blast out 20-25 uh, moves in the opening and get an opening advantage against the strongest of players. And of course, he's fantastic at dynamic chess as well. Uh, I really feel like this is a board where we could get the full point home. Um, apart from Nihal's board, as you have predicted. Yeah, our two whites will definitely try to really push hard. And I, I don't know the approach that Vidit and SL will take in this game. Will they try to be solid? Will they try to play a slightly more uh, offbeat opening and try to catch their opponent somewhere? Because with Black, Black, as we know, at this level, it's not easy to get stuff. Many players just stick to a solid reporter and then they try to see if they get something later. But, you know, SL, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He can go, his mind works a bit differently. Let me just say that. <laughs> he might try something funky today. By the way, oh. the games have begun and Setu opens with e4. His opponent plays e5, knight f3, knight, f, knight c6 on the board. We can expect either bishop c4 or bishop b5 or even d4 which was one of his recommendations in his... Uh, yes, this is Setu's uh, recommendation in his opening course, in fact. D4, ED4, Knight, D4, the Scotch variation against the E4, E5 setup. And, so do you uh, play the Scotch, Soumya? I do, I do. 
and uh, of course black has two options here one is knight f6 and one is bishop c5 uh, and the other one being queen f6 and there are some sidelines like bishop b4 check c3 and then going bishop c5 black opts for the bishop c5 setup here again white has a variety of choices he can go for knight b3 attack the bishop and ask him where he wants to go he can play uh, that's what he goes for so he's going for long castle ideas later uh, knight b3 bishop b6 on the board um, let's see how setu continues he could play queen e2 and bishop e3 here for example and play long castle uh, that's one of the ideas here uh, but yeah. we don't need to play queen e2 immediately because usually uh, yeah we can also develop this bishop first but the problem is where to develop it no so one idea could be like you said queen e2 bishop e3 hmm. another way to develop could be something like bishop f4 queen d2 but to definitely want to castle long here you want yeah. to get a very uh, aggra- uh, spicy position let's just say you want to expand on the que- king side later on when black castle short and with ideas such as f3 g4 h4 stuff like this is very much possible in this lines white has a uh, as you can see somia white has a, uh, in scotch white gets the center generally what black gets in return are a lot of dynamic possibilities so mm. if white can ha- uh, develop quickly and get the pawns rolling mm. say to could get an advantage here what do you think definitely i think a scotch is a fantastic weapon for a surprise or in a last round must win game and that's why i really like his opening choice over here not something he plays regularly because setu uh, as we discussed uh, earlier as well opening expert he plays a lot of variation so his opponent might not have expected the scotch against him and this could uh, play out in his favor i also feel like in scotch it is very easy for black to go wrong if he is not uh, completely um, you know does not have a great understanding of the setup that he wants to go for like does not have clarity then he can go uh, things can go wrong for black very fast that's something i have uh, personally experienced while playing the scotch with the white pieces as well as with the black pieces true sir i agree completely uh, so i also don't have a lot of pleasant memories with scotch sometimes you know you just get crushed that's the opening because for one e4 e5 it's supposed to be the most solid choice against one uh, king king pawn opening but scotch is definitely a weapon which can be very which can lead to very aggressive positions and it's clear why setu is playing it he wants to go for it he d- he wants to go for it without any hesitancy he just he wants to strike so somya do you want to look at some other games yes so let's go to it? uh let's go Three, two, one. So let's go to the third board first and see how. Oh, uh, sorry, Samya. Is- sorry, Samya. I want to see Vidit's game. You want Hans to see Vidit? Hans versus Vidit. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, let's go to Vidit. Vidit being black against Hans Niemann. Uh, knight of three, d five, e three, knight of six, and b three. Yes. Uh, everyone knew this is. Uh, Hans Niemann's choice in a very crucial game. Even though I think USA is out of contention to qualify, so maybe they or do they have chances? I do they have a like outside chance of qualifying? It's very difficult since they are uh, the they last place team, it. if I'm not wrong. But they do have an outside chance of qualifying, so maybe so, they are also uh, trying to win on all boards and get as many board points in. So anyway. uh that's good news for us because when our opponent is also trying to win they will create more uh, weaknesses right they will be more desperate that happens often so mia uh, so what is choosing is this uh, red t b3 setup it is a solid setup for white it's not known as one of the more ambitious choices but it's definitely a try and it's a very positional setup so what white wants is to play bishop b2 control the dark squares and then play him something like c4 knight c3 you know develop in this fashion it, so what black wants is to play quickly develop and gain some space on the king side as white has wasted some time playing moves like nf3 e3 b3 and has not really expanded in the center so that's what black will try to do 
and uh, with it played bishop f5 i guess huh. bishop f5 bishop e2 and h6 making room for the bishop to go back in case it's attacked at some point with knight h4 bishop a3 was played not bishop to b2 but a3 very unusual this uh, is why i was interested in this game what do you think about this move somya <laughs> it's definitely a move that i've never seen before in this setup so already a very creative choice mm, i i think it it shouldn't be a big problem i i understand what what it uh, what could be the intention they want to exchange this bishop and prevent white from a uh, black from castling but then you are giving up your beautiful bishop on uh, like dark squared bishop no and we don't mind exchanging it so i don't see what exactly is the problem anyway let's see how vidith has faced this knight bd7 c4 c6 and castle and now vidith i feel has a choice to go e5 and simply exchange this bishop and okay we have in castle but it's not such a big deal because our king is very safe on f8 and we can always artificially castle at any point with king g8 king h7 or g5 king g7 but we don't want to do that because already the dark squares have been weakened and uh, on the other hand we get center control after e5 bishop f8 king f8 probably um, i mean i i would really like to play this position as black uh, what about you abhimanyu yeah it is a creative choice from hans uh, so e5 is definitely a move i would like to consider mm -hmm. the thing is bishop f8 king f8 white mm -hmm. many times has this idea to play d4 okay and uh, let's see the let's uh, show the idea bishop f8 king f8 d4 yes yes and e4 e4 and something like knight f d2 or knight e5 oh. even yeah that's a great spot somya so yeah something like this and this sort of structure you know it is mm. supposed to be good for black and i really i like this position but sometimes you know white gets a lot of play on the queen side because as you have expanded e5 e4 the dark squares and the squares you you have lost some control on the queen side and white will want to play something like nc3 pressuring this d5 pawn play rook c1 and try to uh, gain something on the queen side so that would be white's plan in such positions so what black has is because of this e4 pawn this pawn creates a wedge and that's why black wants to play on the king side and create some ideas like maybe even h5 h4 maybe you want to play something uh, i don't know maybe it's so, lot, there are a lot of ideas you want to exchange this e5 knight and then play your queen to g5 at some point so mm. this is definitely an interesting position uh, so bishay it's a very interesting choice choice by hans yeah definitely at least a, a choice that makes you think over the board and not rely on your opening preparation and in rapid making your opponent think is already a good good decision good opening decision but uh, with it nothing to worry about and i'm sure he'll find he has played e5 by the way with it has played wow. e5 bishop f8 king f8 on the board and we have reached this position so yeah Yeah, this is a very nice meme. Uh, so yeah, we always prefer to castle our king in a an artificial way. Yeah, so man, it seems just more classy area. Yeah, cooler, cooler as cooler. well. Like <laughs> all yeah, the cool definitely. kids are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, let's go to Nihal's game. and see how yes. our boy ihal is doing he's white against onishchuk uh let's go go through the opening moves he opened with d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight c3 bishop e4 e3 nimzo short castle and bishop d2 d5 knight f3 b6 c into d5 e into d5 rook c1 bishop e7 bishop d3 bishop e7 short castle c5 this is the life position um I think this is like one of Nihal's favorite uh, structures. No, I I remember the idea is something like this: put the knight yes. on e5, bring the pawn to f4, bring the bishop to h4 from e1. Yes, knight e5 on the board and try for a kingside attack. And if White manages to do all of this successfully, then he is definitely better. So let's see how Black counters it. 
well said soumya so this f4 bishop e1 bishop h4 plan after knight e5 is supposed to give white some chances on the king side meanwhile black will try to develop quickly maybe target this d4 pawn uh play knight c6 rook c8 moves like this this is a very theoretical position i'm sure both players are still in their book and uh, yeah it's a very interesting position it's a sort of theoretical tabia i don't know if i use that word correctly tabia na tabia tabia yeah huh. so yeah it is a theoretical tabia of sort sorts huh. and uh, yeah it's a it's a game He plays knight c six. I I think we'll oh, see no, a move like f four. He hasn't played. I'm I'm looking at knight c six. He hasn't played yet. He's uh -huh. still thinking. And look at his time, Abhimanyu. Uh, Nihal is at forty five minutes, and Onishchuk has already taken up nine minutes on his clock. He's down to thirty six minutes. So looks like he's not very familiar with this hmm. position, or perhaps he doesn't remember his preparation. Uh, quite possible because this is. A line which has a lot of little subtleties, and you have to remember it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, white can get very fluid uh, play, and it can be difficult for black to continue. Yeah. So, in fact, this line, a uh, small fun fact: this line, Bishop D two, was popularized by Indian grandmaster Sandeepan Chanda mm -hmm. in two thousand nine, eighteen nineteen period, and after that, it became really popular uh, amongst the Indian players as well. True, and there is huge theory behind it. Uh, it's a very interesting way of countering the Nimzo Indian for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can have good hopes from this game. Uh, and now let's move on to um, what SL is doing. SL is yep. black against a Kobian. Um, let's just have a look at how we reach this position. D four knight f six c four e six knight c three bishop e four Nimzo Indian again e three setup short castle bishop d three d five very similar but white goes for knight f three and black plays c five not b six not the b six setup but c five here short castle d into c four bishop c four a six a three bishop into c three take b five bishop d three bishop b seven A four and C four on the board. This is the life position. You know what I love about this position, Abhimanyu? Yes, Amya. I love the fact that SL has forty four minutes on his clock while Akobian has thirty seven. <laughs> so it's I think it's already a very good sign that most uh, all of our players have more time on their clock. Sure. Yeah, it seems like all our players are very well prepared for today's game, and uh, yeah, the position we have is very dynamic. So. White has a pair of bishops and the center to boot with it. So White will want to play something like bishop c2 and prepare this e4 move somehow, and then try to bishop c2 abhimanyu. Yeah, but for now it's not possible. Black will be very quick. Black will play moves like knight bd7, knight e4, maybe trouble the c3 pawn and create a lot of play on the queen side. So it is a very dynamic position, and. Uh, You can't really waste a lot of time. Another interesting idea to counter this e4 stuff is to play n b d seven rook e eight and e five. Go for this break. Hmm. And yeah, I like this idea, but I just feel like white will be a little faster. For example, if we go knight b d seven, he's already going to play rook e one, and for rook e eight, mm -hmm. we already have e four on the board. So now e five might not make so much sense because he closes it with d five. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, this is not great, but. Uh, I guess you you can play a move like knight e four or maybe even bishop e four instead of uh, rook e eight in this position. Yeah, definitely. So it depends on what white plays that we decide to our plan as black. But knight b d seven in general a very good move in the current position, uh, developing a piece and uh, keeping all of our ideas still intact. Yes, and I love when people fianchetto their bishop. I mean, I is this called a fianchetto? It's the queen said fianchetto, so I'm yeah. And look yes. at this bishop; it's a beautiful bishop. Looking it has over this such a long diagonal. range and such a long scope in life can go miles, hmm. can go miles, right? Yes, Mumbai Pune bullet train. <laughs> okay, um, chat. 
what do you think about all the positions we have got and what are your predictions for today's match there was also a poll on the channel do give us your votes and think about uh, let us know what you think uh, right now the poll results are india will win 74% usa will win 14 and draw is 12% so nice Yes, Ishan. Uh, yeah, it was sad to see Argentina lose today. I'm a diehard Messi fan and it was really, I felt really sad when that happened. Really? Argentina lost to Saudi? Yeah, yeah, it was a big upset and I was watching the match live. It was really disheartening for for me oh. to see that. Wow. So, uh, what uh, what time are the matches, Abhimanyu? I don't know. They were just going on constantly. I, I'm really, I'm a... Lifetime Messi ah. supporter, so ah. I was. I'm just following Argentina's matches, and it was so sad to see. Mm, it's okay. They can it always bounce back. They have great. Yeah, yeah, they were leading. Uh, so Messi scored a penalty, and then in the second half, they just scored two goals, and it, it was a yeah. Just very sad for me to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The photo. Huh? So, Mesh talking about the Messi and Ronaldo photo here. Yeah. And I just I just said to Abhimanyu in Marathi that maybe chess got a little heavy on him, you know. Uh, but yeah, he has time to recover and bounce back in the next match. Yes, let's yeah, hope he, so. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, there we see the player camps uh, with it and Hans and Ihal versus um, Onishchuk very clearly. Uh, with it is thinking. Let's go to with it's game. It seems like a few moves have been made. So with it, here black hai or Bishop F8, King F8, ke baad, Knight C3, Queen E7. He did not play D4 immediately. First place, Knight C3, Queen E7. D4, E4. So now knight E5 is not possible because queen already E7 pe aa chuki hai. So we will just pick up the pawn for free. So he goes back knight D2, H5 and rook E1. And uh, as you suggested, Abhimanyu, uh, black is planning to expand on the king side. Can we also push H4 here or do we start with G5 or do we make some useful moves like rook E8? We have a Big choice in this position. True, Soumya. So I'm looking at so many ideas here. You know what I really like? You don't even maybe need to castle artificially. You can just play a move like a move like h4, rook at six, rook g6. Bring your rook into the game like this and mm -hmm. try to see like like I, I can see that this g2 pawn is slightly loose and maybe black can go after this. What do you think, Soumya? Rook at six, rook yeah. g6. Yeah, very cool. I actually like uh, this plan very much. H4. I'm just wondering, what does White have in mind? Because he has given us everything that we would desire. Yeah, it's true. White wants to get, I guess, moves like, you know, there are even ideas which are like uh, Queen C1, CD, CD, Knight B5, and Queen A3. Because with the Queen exchange, oh. uh, it's not that uh, easy for Black to attack on the King side. That is a very nice idea indeed. But what if we at some point simply go king g8 and before yeah, he still. plays king a3 and we remove our queen from the pin on whenever he plays, ah, then you go come in with queen d6, right? Yeah, exactly. I get Something like this. Uh, so there are a lot of ideas here. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't quite like the rookie one move by Hans because I don't really see the point because rookie one you generally want to play if you want to play knight f1 but the knight really has no future there Soumya. Oh, but look at what Vidit has played. He has played none of the ideas we suggested. He plays g6. So now this idea is never possible. This pretty maneuver. Uh, yeah. Why? Why was g6 played? He wants to go king g7. Okay, we get that. But why not go g5? Is it too much to play g5 in this position? Uh, it is an all-out move, but I, it might be a great move still. 
because i because g5 see, it see, might seem like you're weakening your king but i don't really see white attacking black king in near future so maybe g5 was a good alternative too i, I do understand why he didn't go for this rook at 6 rook g6 plan because vidit is a very you know classical positional player he wants to connect his rooks he wants mm. those rooks to work together so he wants to play a move like g6 king g7 then slowly build the attack and go after this white king and i guess white side yeah i mean the only other idea than what you suggested oh he has played played a4 by the way so he is not interested in opening the king side at all i was thinking he might want to open the king side with f3 and ef3 is met with bishop f3 but he doesn't ever want to do that yeah i guess so f3 is a very committal move it is it can be a positionally very dangerous for white but it is also maybe that's the point behind rookie one somya and that's mm -hmm. why he doesn't want to play g5 because like you said f3 ef ef3 bishop f3 and maybe even white can go for maneuvers like e4 later and open so, everything up so if our pawn was on g5 we we could have expected white to play f3 take take and then play e4 in the future exactly but and then g4 is even met by e4 yeah because you take and i take and then i take this pawn as well yeah Seems this so. makes sense this makes sense so that's why he um, he played a move like rook e1 in this position behind the pawn and the bishop and our pawn as well but with a very deep idea black goes g6 um a4 met with king g7 life position Hans Niemann का शर्ट तो बहुत ही कलरफुल है। Yeah, he has a very interesting fashion sense. <laughs> very interesting fashion sense. He always has this Hawaiian colorful T-shirts, and I really like this Somya. Like we even see Levon Aronian wearing some having some very interesting fashion choices sometimes. And mm. uh, you know, like as when we go to a very big tournament, we'll see a like a sea of blue suits and all this and. It's really interesting when someone is wearing, you know, some Hawaiian T-shirt or something funky. Definitely, yeah. I also like uh, these kind of shirts very much. Recently, I got a lot of such similar shirts for Ajinkya for Diwali, and he returned all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's not everyone's taste. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, it's not for everyone. Not yeah, it's okay. So then Queen C one on the board, and this is the current position. He is going for the plan you suggested, Abhimanyu, with Queen A three. क्या बात है? Yeah, it is a very thematic way of because this Queen is, if you see, slightly offside, and it is a way to bring your Queen into the game. Like I said, you want to exchange these Queens with White and try to go into an end game where you will try. To, Black has some weaknesses like D five pawn. It's always. you know slightly soft so you have to keep defending it and you can try to have ideas like a5 b4 rook c1 try to expand on the queen side with white so that's why it's plan and quincian makes a lot of sense okay then we'll get back to this game let's have a look at how our other indian players are doing have an overview um nihal uh ki position mein zyada kuch nahi hua hai knight e5 ke baad black played a6 and this is the life position so not much has changed um nihal might we can expect him to play f4 here or immediately i i'm not sure why he's taken almost 9 minutes because he had 45 minutes when he played knight e5 and he's still thinking so it's not very clear but yeah we can expect him to play f4 and continue with the plan that we suggested for white uh, the third board um third board is sl and yahan pe thode moves aage bad chuka hai game bishop c2 knight b7 bishop a3 rook e8 and queen b1 on the board so b5 pawn ke attack kar raha hai he has allowed black to take bishop f3 by the way and spoil his structure yeah and it is a possibility but black has to be very careful about it because you know you take this pawn uh, you take this knight you might think white's king is weak but sometimes white can even play king h1 rook g1 and have an attack for himself there hey but what what if i take 
you take and I play knight d5. Now I'm attacking c3 pawn. You can take h7. I come here. Now already up to g6, your bishop will be trapped. So um, you have to either, yeah, you have to go back. Like for example, queen e4 here would be a huge blunder because of knight f6. Attacking the queen and the bishop at the same time, queen h4 runs into knight into h7. And that's how you lose the piece and the game. So... Um, bishop h7 would be a mistake. I think black, white would have to uh, protect c3 with whatever, like bishop b2 or queen to b2. Let's let's say bishop b2. And we give check on g5, king to h1, and queen h5. Isn't this super nice to play as black? Maybe, um, maybe even e5 here. Yeah. You know the move I'm seeing somewhere after queen h5. It's something very weird, but might make sense to play bishop d1. It I don't know if it's a good move, but I want to play f4 and rook g1 as white. But like you said, I now that you show this variation, I really like this for black because I can see these knights jumping over, causing black's pro uh, black problems. Maybe this knight will come to f6. Sometimes black has this e5 break. You can even play rook b8 and b4 sometimes and go for the... Uh, oh, c3 yeah, pawn I'm... and have a, a pass pawn on c4 so there are lots of ideas and sl is a very tricky guy so he will love the knights for sure oh yeah definitely i i love this position for black and he has taken bishop f3 so we can expect similar positions to come on the board but gf3 followed by queen b6 not knight d5 as we were suggesting queen b6 on the board um still uh, i i Still like this position for black. But can we focus on my question? Uh, yeah. If E4 I, is a possibility. Yeah, yeah. E4 is a possibility. But then you soften this F4 square. And if black gets knight h5, e5, knight f4, that could be a very dangerous thing, Soumya. This knight will be such a beast and it's very difficult to remove it. And oh, so even after e4, you go knight h5, even though the d5 square is not available, h5 is still, and we simply place our knight to f4. Yeah, this is a very nice point there, Abhimanyu. And even e5, e5 first is possible, so yeah. Uh, first e5 is even better, actually. I, I do agree. And now all of these pieces, pawn uh, squares and pawns, everything is so weak, and we are enjoying this as black. So Queen B6 and suddenly, this queen on B1 looks really offside, yeah, Soumya? <laughs> Shouldn't be on B1 seen, in this position. Yeah, this tournament has been full of queens on the offside, not knowing what to do, being on the wrong squares. <laughs> but this time, it's in our favor, definitely. Jacobian uh, playing for the USA uh, with his queen on B1 and SL, all his pieces at exactly where uh, the right piece, the right squares. Sorry about that. Queens um, are like the Argentinian players today. They're all offside. <laughs> <laughs> Always offside for some reason. <laughs> you know, they even had a goal disallowed because of this offside rule. Like Not one, maybe two or three goals. Oh my God. I must watch that ma uh, the replay of that match or at least the highlights later. Once we yeah, qualify, once we qualify to the quarterfinals, that's going to be my two <laughs> Um, Oh, let's look at uh, what C2 is doing. Bishop F4. Uh, we have seen the position or black plate, knight F6, queen D2, bishop E6, long castle. And um, I actually thought black will go A5 here, but he goes A6, uh, F3, H6, bishop G3, queen D7 and F4. Ye life position hai. Very interesting uh, play. Ha, aur abhi, uh, what do you think, Abhiman? You can black long castle or is it too much? It is a possibility for sure. It is a theme in these lines that black sometimes has this possibility to go uh, castle long. In, in fact, it might even be uh, a good move. Be but what I'm, because if you castle short, what I'm seeing is sometimes you have this very annoying move, maybe not now immediately, to play bishop h4 and pester this knight on f6. Mm. And you I don't see. want your king to be on g8 and spoil your structure for sure. 
come under a huge attack. Yes. So Long Castle, definitely an idea. Um, what else? Maybe knight g4, but then we have the key one at least and we prevent the push of e3 ideas. Yeah. Yeah, this rookie one move is always there. Maybe white can even look to just develop first place move like player move like bishop d3, bring this h1 rook by rook h1 or rook h f1, and then go for some, uh, you know, expand by playing f5 or e5. The, these two moves, you know, Soumya, when you have a center like this, one thing for black, which I, okay, I've played this line myself, and I've noticed is you constantly have to calculate e5, f5 every move. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that it doesn't work as black because if they work then it can be disastrous for black immediately yeah and uh yeah i i can imagine black feeling extremely uncomfortable in these kind of positions white has more space as you can see and white is the one making all the threats while black is constantly looking out for them and making sure they don't work out um, you know, yes, Soumya, I, what I like I, for black is actually, uh, sorry to interrupt you, like so, a move like maybe long castles and then g5, you know. Uh, so, abhi long castle karenge or agar white bishop d3 khelenge, to abhi man you bolte, g5. Mm -hmm. This is always a possibility as you want, you will sacrifice a pawn, but in you will get this very crucial e5 square in return. Yes. Maybe even knight g4 here. Yep. And the idea to play bishop e3. And uh, let's say rook, a, rook h1, then knight h2 will come. And uh, rook d1 will come. To... It's a long term compensation, even so, I feel. Yeah, it. maybe bishop f2. And. Uh, this is like very annoying, right? You take and then you take rook h2. Yeah. Yeah, this is not what Setu wants for sure. Yeah. This is not something we want. Uh, so G5, very good suggestion there, Abhimanyu. So long castle ki baad shayad, uh, picking B1 ek achi move ho sakti hai just to get out of these pins, you know? Yeah, I also like bishop h4 as a move. Like it just you know, going after this G5 plan mm -hmm. because uh, I feel this is Black's main plan in these positions. You have to play G5 to get this E5 square. And uh, yeah, Bishop H4, you know, like you said, we also have to calculate something like G5, FG5, Knight G4. Ah, I was just looking at that and I didn't like it at all. I was like, no, yeah. this doesn't look right. This, yeah, looks, true. this looks problematic. Like this, this, Diagonal is very annoying. Maybe, maybe it would still be okay, but then once. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, this is quite tricky actually for white. Uh -huh. So maybe just King B1, like a safe move, it's always useful. Get out of this diagonal and then you can make your arrangements where you want to keep your bishop, rook, all of that. Very nice prophylactic move there, King B1. Sanjay Mishra is suggesting h3 here, by the way. h3, interesting suggestion not to allow knight g4. Um, but the problem is we still allow it. Because after we take and black takes, uh, we cannot take the knight because the rook on h1 will be hanging. It was a good suggestion, Sanjay G, but doesn't work because of tactical reasons. Yeah, very a great spot there. Uh, so, do you want to uh, look at uh, some other games, Soumya? Maybe one of the other teams. Definitely. Let's uh, let's give a quick overview of what our teams are doing. Where I think uh, I think Nihal ki uh, board per uh, we were feeling quite optimistic, and Setu ke board pe bhi uh, achhi position aayi hai. Uh, also, he has a huge time advantage. Uh, eight minutes up on the clock, up, opponent still thinking. Uh, Vidit or uh, Vidit ki position bhi kafi uh, normal hai and uh, remains to be seen how both the sides continue. And SL uh, against Akobian was, yeah, SL against Akobian we really liked for black, right? Yeah, I, like, I think this suits SL style well. He, huh. he will try to create a lot of problems and 
okay objectively this should be okay for white mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yeah with the knights it's always difficult to you know it's very difficult to play against na- knights especially in rapid format where you can create a lot of cheapos and cause your opponent problem so somi i'm actually yeah. looking at this crazy crazy game yes. uh, lu shang lai versus uh, vecher lagra maxim mvl oh, wow and, and china have already qualified for the quarter finals with the one round to spare and what is this position oh my god wow so let's just count the pieces equal pieces hai pawns ka kya hal hai pawns black is only one pawn down but look at his king it's just so bad it's terrible how do you even save your king from the mating net you don't say you just go after the opponent king that's the point <laughs> i don't understand how the bar gives this position as even of course the bar gives this position as equal but still uh... <laughs> no what what do you play here as black uh, i'm sorry like can you take this pawn but then i'll play rook g1 i won't take it with the queen i'll play rook g1 and i'll check mate on g6 yeah i don't think you want to take so i'm thinking of a move like rook c8 is it a rook a c8 you know threatening c2 check we don't want to look at the other side somya imagine your house is burning on one end but you just want to throw stones at the opponent's house <laughs> as quickly as possible to <laughs> guess it um not sure uh okay fine nobody <laughs> sure what to do in this position so it's okay uh, okay let's say i take gf7 first chalo yeah so i don't know the, i i was thinking to get let it. me show my idea okay i want okay. to i want you to take king f7 then i'll play knight c4 if you Oof. take i'll take with the bishop and if you take i think this is checkmate rook d7 and rook g1 queen h7 is checkmate sorry wow so this is very my... <laughs> a very nice idea somna but so, i don't think he'll take king into f7 king on uh, f7 i doesn't uh, seem doesn't right. seem right yeah hmm. so so rook f7 hai na yeah rook f7 or king h8 one of these two moves oh king h8 even then queen on queen comes to h6 and it's checkmate and you are but, saying but bishop d3 na and queen h7 ah uh, yeah yeah bishop d3 is very dangerous right right so uh, it's better to take rook into f7 surely ha uh, so uh rook f7 and uh, okay now rook g1 anyway you are playing h8 or king f8 even yeah you both are i i like king f8 more but i guess both uh, are possible yeah i also like king f8 more it just looks safer na yeah exactly okay. queen b4 will run into bishop e7 so bishop d3 is probably the only move and you want to take here and threaten this in the future yeah okay this is this is some proper mess proper mess uh, so uh, mvl actually played rook a e8 instead of rook a c8 he attacked the white queen lu shangla one of the few players in the world still playing with a mask just look at him and he's I a very know. strong player yes uh definitely he was world junior champion in 2014 yeah. yes in our hometown that too in pune ah in pune yes yes um and rook e8 uh actually uh, all the chinese players are playing very well in this tournament yeah they have a very young very uh, talented team and they have been performing very well you know when i see this uh, chinese players you know they in team events they always perform well somehow their team is so well knit together they they never underperform in these team events somya do you think it's because they all like sort of practice together they have all these um academies where uh, you know uh, all of the players stay uh, do their studies and also do uh, practice chess together do you think that could be a huge reason yeah it's possible and as we okay it's a thing that team spirit is very important they practice together also what i see always is if one guy loses some other guy wins yeah to compensate in their team it's it's almost like you know telepathy somehow it always works out 
So they have this very good team spirit. I feel a very closely yeah, knit team. Yeah, they are very. Uh... very they have a huge uh, camaraderie between them and no matter who is in the team it's not like these same five players need to be in the team you know for example this current team is completely different than their usual national team like there is no ting li jian there is no yu yang yi but uh, still all of these guys work really well together yeah it's very true so avinash is asking tips for beginners who who are oscillating between 500 and 600 Avinash, just look at chess every day. Play a lot of chess. Play, solve a lot of problems. Analyze your games. You know, it's. I always feel it's about working consistently than working very hard over like a short period of time. Just keep working, and at some point, uh, you will uh, improve and you will increase your rating much beyond five hundred, six hundred. And uh, so, just keep working. Keep seeing chess every day. In G four, the bar doesn't like this move. Abhimanyu, maybe the uh, position has tilted in Black's favor, but I don't see how Black is like. I'm sure White will find some perpetual at least. No. Yeah. Is... Like at some point, he's bound to find a perpetual at least. I see no, this so plan, for example. Huh. Yeah. This is like a very. Dense, dense forest. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. My head is spinning. Just look at looking at the position. There are so many ideas for both the sides. Yeah, this looks. Yeah, I don't know actually. White black doesn't have an immediate idea. Yeah, maybe knight d five. Oh, sorry, it's white to play. Oh no, you had bishop g six. Oh my god, shit! In that position. I thought bishop. Oh, bishop g six and queen h five. Yeah. Right. Sorry, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, this is not great news. Uh, this is a right old match. One position to play for sure. And uh, mm, which other game do you want to have a look at, Abhimanyu? Yeah, I'm just going uh, looking at all the games which are going on. And I have a question. Um, how uh, how long do you think? Uh, Like for example, how much do you prepare before your games, Abhimanyu? Because uh, here we see that uh, there are two games today. There is only one game, but in the previous two rounds, uh, two days there were two games every day, and uh, also uh, in the quarters there will be two games to play, match one and match two, uh, and semis and finals as well. So you need energy for those games as well. So how much do you prepare usually before the game? Uh, yeah. So. Personally, I try to prepare, but never try to over prepare. You know, sometimes what happens? You keep checking openings, you keep trying to make yourself ready for the game, but you lose a lot of energy, like you said. It's it's rapid, so you need to be extremely alert. You need to be sharp. You know, the thing is, Soumya, I feel that through preparation, you can play thirty minutes, one hour, maybe maybe one and a half hour, some if you are like extremely well prepared. But yeah, you still have to play very well for the rest of the game, and. It won't matter for anything if your mind isn't sharp and you can't follow it up very well. So, I would say you have to find the right balance. Uh, I I try to set a timer, you know, Soumya. Like, okay, today I'll prepare for one and a half hours only. I won't cross that. And once it's done, it's done. Like, I will go to sleep. <laughs> it's nap time. What do you do, Soum? Do you prepare a I, lot or? I have a problem with over preparing. I am trying to cut it down, but even my cut it. Like the the <laughs> the amount of preparation I do, even when after I've cut it down, I feel it's a lot. I should conserve my energy, and I feel I end up losing a lot of energy uh, in this whole preparation thing. And that's why maybe on the on that day I'm still able to play well. But as the tournament uh, reaches the end, uh, towards the eighth and ninth round, I'm very low on energy already, and it shows in my games. So uh, that's something I'm. Yeah, I'm trying to work on, and it's uh, yeah, like uh, now that you say it, it makes so much sense. Yeah, like you can play only one hour, one and a half hours on your preparation maximum. How much more? And also, if the possibility of your opponent playing what you prepared is almost like twenty percent or ten percent, right? 
so uh, you will have yeah. to play something on your own only basically i think we prepare for confidence like you know we feel we have prepared well it's like uh, i at least for me it's more of self confidence that i give myself ki theek hai mujhe aata hai mujhe koi tension nahi hai you know to co- control my nerves but i feel sometimes it makes you more nervous because uh, you have prepared so much and then kuch ye reh gaya wo reh gaya you know aisa karte karte and then you are preparing till the last minute and you end up feeling more nervous for the game yeah this is extremely relatable i guess all chess players go through this and yeah <laughs> you just have to strike the right balance i guess ha so uh, let's go to vaidya uh, saumya other- Uh, yeah. Setu's game, <laughs> he played just what we discussed. Actually, this Bishaj four G five move. Oh, he did. Oh, oh no, that's not good news. Yeah, I guess he thought F into G five, Knight G four, and okay, you have to take. I guess yeah, on G five. Hmm. Can we not take? Do we have the option of going back, Bishaj F two? Maybe, but it doesn't seem right. Yeah, so maybe one move we play Bishaj for, then yes. we come back. But I am just uh, afraid that this might actually be worse for White. Or you think it's okay? I really don't know. Yeah, maybe worse for White. Yeah, maybe what you're saying is right. White needs to go for damage control right now and play Bishaj too. Uh, yeah, I don't see a very clean way for White actually after this. Yeah, I, I just don't. Maybe rook e one, and we take, and this is still possible. Actually, I actually prefer maybe king b one, but okay, instead of rook e one, king b one. But then oh, but no, bishop e three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I'll take it g. Hmm. So bishop h four. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised, and say to. Uh, um the clock situation has changed drastically 20 minutes versus 26 uh for say two it g bishop g5 and um but even this might only be enough for equality right or does is black better or something yeah it, it does look a bit dangerous in general oh, i see what is the problem maybe this here and knight e4 oh no d8 is also hanging so this should be okay Yeah, and you have bishop into a six in the end here, which is a sneaky little move. Nice. The computer doesn't like it, but okay, we like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Mas, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. Setu has to be very precise here, I guess, as white. It's yeah. can't just yeah. play or not. Yeah. yeah, actually, in hindsight, what you suggested was was a better option. Yeah, king b one. Yeah, just get out of all the pings and then you can think. You can play bishop h four on the next two moves. Uh, so, by the way, uh, let's go to um, Nihal's game because it's changed drastically. A six bishop e one was played instead of f four, uh, but with the same idea. You want to play f four on the next move and make room for your bishop. Otherwise, bishop यहाँ पर कर क्या रहा है? So knight c6, f4, c into d4, knight into c6, bishop c6, king to d4, knight e4, not allowing our bishop to h4, knight e4 just on time, bishop into e4, pawn into e4, d5, bishop c5 check, um, and that's the life position. Now we king h1 खेलेंगे. Yeah, and... because bishop f2 runs into e3, which is a very neat point, which I guess mm-hmm. Black has in his mind. Yeah. very uh, uh, important not to blunder into these things e3 and if the bishop moves chat jaldi jaldi bataiye aap yahan par kya khel pata pat pata pat sanga ho let's give the chat some time ani uh, we can go to the position in the game we are expecting king h1 here the vichar kai karto hai nihal king h1 the first to say maybe he's uh, not on his boat no he is yeah okay nihal is someone who tries to calculate everything 
So maybe he's going very deep in bishop f2, e3, then you take the c6 bishop and trying to calculate that. But I feel like king h1 should be the move he'll play in the end. Yeah, this looks, it doesn't look convincing. I mean, why would you allow, achha, you knight are into d1. Knight into d1 should be the point. And I... the point is, queen d1, knight d1, if you play rook c8, knight f2, rook c6, again chat, find a winning move here. Nice. And those who got E2, well done. Well done, guys. E2 but yeah. Was the idea in that position. Um, Bishop G3. E2. Discover check. Ajayega king par. Aur hamari queen bichari ek pawn ke liye shaheed ho jayegi. Jo bilkul bhi manzoorat nahi hai hamari liye. So that's why we Shaheed Kapoor ho jayegi wo. Shaheed Kapoor. Shaheed Kapoor. Aur Bishop C5. And King H1 on the board, Bishop B7. Uh, but our question to you was, ki, um, par E3 ko DC6, EF2, King H1, Queen D1, Rook D1, sorry, Knight ah. D1, Rook C8, Knight F2, Rook C6 ko aap kya khelouge? Yes, you've got it. VSC, VS check. Uh, Rushikesh, nahi, Rushikesh, not that won't be sufficient to win the game. Uh, VS Chess, pre H Jane, both of you got it. B4 is the move. And the bishop is pinned. You can take the knight, but you will lose your rook. So that was the point. But um, it somehow doesn't look convincing. There are many ways yeah, yeah. for black to play instead. So white goes king h1, bishop b7, and knight e4. That's the position on the board. Mm, even... Are, but this is very equalized. Ho abhi. Queen d5, for example. Yeah, I guess you have to exchange queen into d5, bishop d5, knight c5. And uh, yeah, this doesn't look like a lot, Soumya, right? Hana, yeah, this looks like it's going to liquidate into a draw very quickly. Yeah, probably it does. Yeah, so not much in Nihal's game. Of course, draw positive result, but not a win. Uh, let's see if we can expect a win from SL in his game. He played F4 uh, in this position, Abhimanyu. And Black played G6. So F4 preventing E5, guys. Black played G6, freeing his knight to jump around. And uh, e4, knight h5 on the board, bishop c1, protecting the f4 pawn, queen c7, attacking f4. Abhi aapko ya to e5 khelna padega ya f5. e5 on the board, knight b6. Now this square Ooh. is an outpost. Uh, but you have given up a pawn, a, b, and now a, black is thinking. Yeah, so SL is probably thinking whether to go knight d5 immediately or play a into b5. You know, you can take rook 8, rook 8 and take this b5 pawn, but I'll get knight d5 and both this f4 and c3 pawns are hanging and yeah, this this seems very good for black, at least aesthetically. Aesthetically beautiful. And what do you do for queen c5? Do you take it or do you even go queen d8? Maybe you go um, queen d8 and play knight f4 or yeah, just play knight f4 immediately. I love queen d8. Just go for it, yeah? Huh. You don't want to exchange queens, you want to go for the king. And bishop e4 doesn't really pin the knight because we always have rook c8, I think. Yeah, and this seems like a very good position for black. Definitely. I still think black, white is not that worse after queen d6. But I can play knight into c3 and I really prefer black yeah, here. It's just is, much easier. Now you get this pawn and uh, I mean he will have to save his bishop and you get the d4 pawn and this is all very good. Yeah. Brilliant. So we, we like uh, this option very much. The other option is knight to d5 directly. Sorry. Um, uh, the other option was knight to d5 directly. Uh, there seems to be a technical issue with the transmission. Una momento. 
Sim. Ah, okay. She's not sure. Okay. So, uh, can you go to the Hans versus Vidit game, please? I have, this is a very interesting question. It has heated up and uh, yeah, we left, left it quite far behind. But in this existing position, wow. So, Hans has really got, made a lot of progress on the queen side. You know, he's attacking this b7 pawn. This rook on c7 looks very dangerous. But if Vidit managed to defend, he has this beautiful bind against d4, e3 pawn. This d5 pawn is just uh, con controlling the center completely. So, what do uh, what does black play here? Maybe a possible move could be something like queen f5, idea knight e4. And I want to bring my queen to this f2 square, this juicy square. Uh, this is one possibility which Vidit might be considering. Also, you know, black. Black has some G4 ideas which look very interesting. And the point is, you want to blast the king side open. You just want to go for it. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting to see what with it will do. So, G4, one move which with it may be considering is uh, queen e7. And white tries to exchange these queens. But uh, yeah, actually. I like with its position, he has quite a lot of, you know, very uh, interesting ideas. Even here, you can exchange the queens. You, you can play, uh, go for a lot of stuff here. So, uh, moving along, moving along. Okay, in Setu's game. So, Setu has played uh, Bishop F2, like Soumya suggested. So... Probably a very good practical decision there by C2. Just exchanging this bishop, not allowing knight g4 and stuff like this. And uh, yeah, so knight g4, queen d2. In this position, g to f4 is what probably white will, black will do. Uh, and white will recapture with queen f4. Now black has this e5 square. But his structure is probably not that great on the king side. So there are some trade-offs here. And it is a... Positionally interesting, uh, you know, it's a very positional position. Like, and you you want to play h5, maybe yeah, queen e7 is a great idea. You want to play queen g5 and exchange these queens. Here, uh, that I have to say, I'm impressed by Black's play here. Unisky, very strong player. He was Cuba number. Uh... Uh, two after linear uh, Dominguez and Dominguez changed to USA. Then he was Cuba number one, and now he's also switched to USA. So there's a new Cuban moment now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and also a friend of mine, by the way. Uh, very nice person. Uh, but yes, in this game, Setu is also a very dear friend, and definitely rooting for Setu here. He's definitely not being very nice in this game. He's not being very nice. So, uh, yeah, but queen has six uh, be a threat actually, you know? Yeah, queen, queen f6 six. or queen g5 and you want to exchange these queens. Huh. So, we will be left with the isolated pawn on e4 which is not something we desire and knight on g4 very well placed going to e5 and to f2 and to e3 attacking h2 beautiful knight I must say. Shayad h3 ek move ho sakti hai, but then uh, it still doesn't serve the purpose after queen g5. Yeah, yeah, and again you have this pin. You can't take queen into g5, h into g5 and this knight because your h1 rook is hanging and you lose an exchange. So, uh, yeah, you have to really play accurately as bhai tier I feel. Like in, the bar might be showing that the position is equal, but it does look very pleasant for black. Yeah, so 
let's look at some other games. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see what MVL is doing again. So MVL, uh, this game is MVL versus uh, Lu Shangle, a very strong Chinese grandmaster versus MVL, and he's completely winning against MVL. Oh my God! So he's just a queen up. He'll take queen into f7, and this is not great. This is just lost. So what happened here actually? Uh, so we left it around. Yeah, we left it around bishop d3. And yeah, MVL played rook e5, which is not a great move. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Actually, it is the best move now. Yeah. So he wants to stop this idea with bishop g6. Yeah. Uh, move before, please. Ah, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, but... Uh... We need to do things. This looks uh, equal, uh, or is it better for white uh, Abhimanyu this end game? Uh, no, can't you just take knight into e five or knight into b six? You are just winning material here, yeah. No, it's black to play, na? Knight c four. Ah, okay. It's probably a transmission error. Yeah, yeah. Now King C2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess Black will want Black will take on C4, Bishop into C4, and you want to play something like Rook C7, but you have to be careful not to allow some attack against your king. Yeah, so one move, well, the problem is if knight into c4, bishop into c4, rook c7, you can allow rook d8 check, king h7, bishop d3 check. Uh, can you just show that, dear Angel? Yeah, I'm just look at it. And then what? Like, is it checkmate? It's, it's no, I'll play rook checkmate. d8 check. No. Like. Yeah, this does look very dangerous. <laughs> it, is, it is a beautiful checkmate, actually. Uh, King yeah. H5. Uh, and you play Bishop G6. King H6. Bishop F5. King H5. Uh -huh, and Bishop Sorry. G4 mate. Yes, yes, I'm seeing the screen. So uh, we were discussing rook, F, rook c5. No, yeah. we were discussing this position, right? But this was not the position uh, that happened. We just had a transmission error, but we were discussing this position with uh, knight c4. Bishop c4, rook c7, rook d8. Uh, no, sorry, rook c7, right? Not rook c5, rook c7, rook d8, king g8, king h7, rook d3, king h6, rook d6. Ah, sorry. The um, Sorry, there seems to be a transmission error. So let's just stick to the game, Abhimanyu. Yes, let's just stick to the game. And uh, by the way, I think things are heating up in SL's game. Oh, there seems to be a transmission error there too. Because I don't think he played rook a8 here. After bishop yeah, e4. Awesome. Yeah. That is not the SL we know. <laughs> no, no. Sharia is like a miracle. 
yeah true that <laughs> or, but i do uh, like this looks great so me yeah bishay e4 i guess he he must have played a move like queen d7 here so the rook was on b8 uh, maybe queen d7 yeah yeah That's and we have this oh my you know it's this knight on d5 is like poetry you know it just makes you feel very happy if this knight you don't want to go queen d8 Yeah, it's possible too, but I was just I didn't want to calculate queen into b five. I was too lazy to calculate it, so I thought queen d seven. Your favorite archangel's position, no? Like typical, uh, give a pawn on the queen side and just play for mate on the king side. But this Lala. is like a archangel uh, dream, you know? Like you are not even giving a pawn if you play queen d seven. That's what I thought. Ah, but yeah, better version of archangel. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Don't even give up the B5 pawn. You keep it under control, and you play knight D5 and F. I love this. Yes, fantastic. Actually, uh, SL good chances. Even though we don't have the exact position, but we are assuming he has played Queen D7. Uh, do you think uh, we could get the player camps so that we know what's happening on their board? Yeah, that would be wonderful. And this. Okay. we don't have cameras on the indian team at the moment so we will get them as soon as we have cameras on our team uh, this is nihal's position it's completely equal in terms of material as well as the material balance uh, opposite color bishops and rooks on the board but no big weaknesses in position uh, knowing nihal he will try to grind on he'll just keep playing keep playing keep tiring is opponent out but this will be very difficult to convert for sure let's have a look at what vidit is doing against neeman he's black uh rook c7 we reached this position right you were discussing this and black played g4 he went for it mhm mm uh, we need seven yeah. very so much possible I guess what you are scared of queen into e seven. Uh, can you just show queen e seven, rook e seven, and g three, and uh, your king is sort of boxed in, right? I'll play rook e eight next. I will target this e three pawn, which looks so weak, and I actually like this position for black. It's much easier to play as black here. Yeah. So, you go rook e yeah with it 6 and rook b yeah even rook c8 Or, rook c3 is a possibility 9 96 yeah c8 even better yeah rook c8 rook c3 is a better option and actually the rook can't move as long as our rook is on e8 so we will definitely get rook c8 rook c3 in that's uh fantastic uh, yeah yeah that's why uh, so, neeman didn't go uh, for this and he played rook e2 this is a funny looking move yeah So what's his point? His point yeah. is probably that in future, if G into H three happens, he always can defend with Bishop G two, and it's just trying to make sure that everything is protected with this move. This looks great for Vidit. It's just that he has seven minutes to twenty two, but I uh, I really like this position. I would love to play this as black. Um, do you think um, what what are our options um, with the black pieces now? We can even give up. This B seven pawn, we don't really care about it. Uh, yeah, we don't. Who needs material? Uh, so, uh, yeah, that is one option. Hmm. Yeah, I love rookie eight, and the point is, you stop this rookie seven ideas, which are always slightly sneaky. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's a very good positional decision, even to play G three, which it seems like you are uh, stopping everything. Yeah, nothing is going on after G three. You don't have an immediate attack, but you get a very, very good positional plus after that too. You know what, uh, Abhi, uh, Manu? I think there is another problem with Queen Seven that we simply go back Queen G Six. Ah, no, this doesn't work. So yeah, I thought Bishop D Three or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, Sneaky sorry. little move. With the Rook on E Two, it's possible. So <laughs> I was thinking here we can play Rook G Eight, and then I thought why I couldn't we play it there? 
with the rook on e8 it's possible e2 it's possible because there is no bishop to d3 this is nice yeah so with it goes for g3 actually okay as i can see in the cam <laughs> yes uh, g3 on wow. the board so it is playing very positionally he loves playing positional chess and uh, making use of his years of experience uh hans niemann on the defensive yeah definitely this e3 pawn is such a worry and your king never feels safe with these pawns on h4 and g3 somya i'm loving this position for with it honestly this is a very with it sort of position he'll slowly now you know like Uh, a snake he'll just go slowly and try to see what uh, try to see where he can strike so uh, overall somya i'm seeing that our chances seem fairly good yeah like i'm seeing sl had a good position vidit has a good position nihal is probably the one trying although it's around equal and let's look at setu's game uh, yeah. i'm really interested to see what's going on there Guys, SL has not blundered. His rook is still on B8. If you can see on the live boards, just look at his look rook. It's not on the light square. It's on the dark square. It's still on B8. He has not played rook A8. It's a transmission error. There is no need to panic. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Uh, which which game did you want to see, Abhimanyu? Uh, Setu's game, because that Setu. was the game I felt that uh, it. Like that could be a slightly minus for yes. the Indian player. So queen f four, queen e seven. Uh, there we have Vidit and Hans Niemann on the screen. By the way, queen f four, queen e seven, g three, queen g five was played. Rook d two, queen into f four, g into f four, f five, bishop d three, rook d f eight. Um, and that's the life position. थोड़ी तो awkward है ये position. F four का pawn थोड़ा weak है हमारा. Uh, इसे हम रूक एफ वन से सपोर्ट जरूर कर सकते हैं नाइट ई टू भी आ सकते हैं ये दो मूव अवेलेबल है पर नाइट ई टू को नाइट एफ टू आएगा सॉरी नाइट ई टू विल रन इन टू नाइट एफ टू हियर एंड वील लूज द ई फोर पॉन सो दैट्स नॉट व्हाट वी वांट टू डू मे बी इवन पॉन इन टू एंड नाइट ई फोर इज नाइट एफ टू बट एंड बिशअप सी सिक्स सो या uh first knight f2 makes more sense but here rook f1 looks very logical supporting f4 and keeping things together yeah it does and uh, yeah black also you know like you have you have to somehow strike against this f4 pawn this is the thing if white managed to bring the pieces this f4 pawn it seems a bit of a weakness now but you know later on it can even turn out to be a passer so ha huh, exactly i think these small weaknesses don't matter so much in rapid games it's not time in you tumhare paas ki tum dheere dheere khel ke tumhare opponent ka outplay karo you know you are going to come under time pressure at some point and there are going to be mutual mistakes so such a small disadvantage is not a very big deal in rapid games i feel and it can even turn in your favor and at least this position i think we can say that setu will hold this for sure yeah i'm also loving that he has a Good time advantage here of five minutes, and that gives huh. him a very nice cushion there. Huh. Uh, so his thinking is trying to uh, make the right decisions. Probably is calculating a few moves ahead, and then he'll make some moves very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, uh, which game do you want to look, Sam? I, I I want to look something spicy. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, let's. Uh, I thought we could have a look at how Israel is doing because. Uh, a lot of our chances depend on them in case we make a draw so yeah let's just have a quick look at all of their boards um uh, mamedarov here playing against maxim trotstein on the top board um bishop c7 ye kya move hai acha a5 pe tha bishop wow how did this night ha yeah chak <laughs> colvers has some very interesting ideas yeah yeah So so wait. Still, and the the knight knight on is is trapped, man. Like, the idea here, Soumya. Yeah. Idea b6. I I guess. and but I'll move my queen, yeah, Haan, but move queen, Yeah, could be the worry here. And... Or bishop b8? Yeah, bishop b8. I was thinking of knight d6, and somehow you you are safe for now. 
as you can't take the night and because yes. your queen is hanging it is cute let's just show them you can't take it because queen is hanging and uh, like queen e7 runs into knight b7 so yeah uh, bishop b8 maybe not the best move knight b8 is possible can we move our queen to f6 yeah that also looks like a, a good suggestion but I'm very interested if D5 or C5 is possible. Uh, I want to see if D5 works. D5 seems uh, like a good try. Yeah, yeah, definitely. D5 looks very good here because, uh, okay, maybe E5, yeah, and then I. But take you can take take, and there is a very nice cheapo here. Uh huh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I spotted it. I spotted <laughs> it, guys. Let's see if you can uh, find what happens if Black takes. Queen into c6. Beautiful. So, chalo, um, hum, we are waiting for our chat to participate a little more. Uh, kya ho hai, Queen Bishop? C6? Guys, we need your support. This is the this is a very important match for our qualification. We need your support, guys. <laughs> वर्ल्ड कप मत देखो वर्ल्ड कप में इंडिया नहीं खेल रहा इधर खेल रहा है हाँ एग्जैक्टली वेरी वेल सेट देर अभी मनु क्वीन सी सिक्स वेल स्पॉटेड संजय जी वी एस सी चेक एंड एवरीवन एस शाश्वत गुप्ता नाइनटी सेवन चेक फोक में क्वीन चली जाएगी ब्लैक की सो एक्चुअली ब्लैक डिड प्ले बिशप बी एट बट अभी मनु yeah probably there is knight b6 somewhere here and you get this exchange but oh uh, but i i can collect some yeah okay. and uh, okay this doesn't work and knight a5 probably c5 i don't know a5 <laughs> looks better yeah <laughs> i'm just waiting for the bar to let us uh we <laughs> Well, like okay, there is something even juicier here, apparently, which we are missing. Ah, maybe knight c five is the point somewhere. Yeah, this is beautiful. So oh, the really? point is, if you take the rook, then you take knight into e six, right? And where do you move your queen I'll now? I'll play queen b six, safe side. Yeah, I'm but now play. knight into f eight. <gasps> oh. King f eight. Queen oh. f5, and you collect all the pawns. You are a piece wow. down, but Black's king is really unsafe, and this is a very, is very good position. This is beautiful. So Bishop b8 was played. Knight d6, Queen e7 was played instead of uh, the Knight b6 move that we were considering. We saw this. We saw that Black White can play Knight d7 here, but then Knight b6 is something we missed. Rook b8, Rook b8, and now White can play Bishop c7. Uh, C6, oh, bishop sorry. c6 can run into rook oh, b7. So yeah. I guess. Uh, maybe knight a5 or knight c. Yeah. Yeah, okay. perhaps. Knight a5, knight a5, and we pick up the c6 pawn. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this so, is this has been played. So okay, we can say that this game could go either way. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, let's see how Nabati is doing against Temur. Uh, Bishop C8 was the last move. Uh, ये तो बहुत ही middle game position है मतलब यहाँ पर तो ज़्यादा कुछ हुआ ही नहीं है इस game में. Yeah, this is. बस ए, एक minor piece और एक pawn exchange हुआ है अब तक अभी मन्नू. उन्होंने 25 move खेले हैं and they have only exchanged one knight and one pawn, the d pawns. That's all. बाकी सारे pawns board पर हैं और pieces भी. I guess because of this light square bishop, white is slightly better, but uh, it's going to be a long, long game. So, and what I'm looking is, you know, which game won't be long? It's with its game, <laughs> because I'm seeing that I'm seeing that something can happen soon. I don't know what, but I feel something is happening. This looks dangerous. This looks dangerous. Go, Vidi. Go, Vidi. Let's yes. go. Oh, Jeez, Queen F5 is such a beautiful move, which with it played. So the point is, okay, it went go. Uh, Let's just show uh, what uh, happened after G3. Rook B7. Yeah. Yeah, White. Ne. So A5. Nice move here. White cannot take because the rook on B7 is hanging. So 
क्वीन बी सिक्स रुक बी सेवन क्वीन बी सेवन बहुत ही अच्छी पोजिशनल मूव है इफ आई कंट्रोलिंग दीज टू पॉन्स एंड देन क्वीन एफ फाइव बाई विद आई नो वॉट यू मीन अभिमन्यू कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन टू द चैट so queen f5 first of all i'm always looking at this f2 square this if queen reaches there it means destruction so right now it's protected by this e2 rook but you know this rook which has been offset for all this time suddenly black wants to play rook c8 and if this rook comes then oh this is very very ooh dangerous la la, and this will be checkmate <laughs> ooh la la indeed so yeah ooh la la indeed <laughs> Uh, this is fantastic and you know the best part is black cannot i think white cannot even prevent it rook c2 khel hi nahi sakta white to hamari next move rook c8 hai aur white prevent kaise kar raha hai le lo hamare sare pawns yaar kya hi kar loge tum kha lo sab kuch hum to checkmate hi karne wale hai yes yeah i don't know what how white is going to play i can only say maybe he wants he can exchange queens but guys queen exchange won't help white here This bishop on f1, which is even blocked by this rook, ये कहीं नहीं जा रहा है ये बंदा इधर ही रुकेगा. Oh, also chat, you are I I understand you're concerned about the time situation in Vidit's game, but we see that Vidit has only one minute to seventeen per position. तो देखो position में blacks के plans बहुत ही clear है. There is no big complication on the board. ऐसा नहीं कि black का king weak है and white की भी बहुत सारी attack आ रही है. तो बहुत precise कुछ calculate करना है. ये comparatively simple position hai and black does have a clear plan of bringing the rook to c8 which vidit has found with queen f5 so uh, i don't think it's a big cause of concern the time situation vidit has mentally pre moved rook c8 here ha huh. <laughs> doesn't matter what white plays yeah queen c7 rook c8 yes queen e5 khelenge ab uh, hans for sure how do we counter that Yeah, so I feel that the best way is just exchange the queens and play knight e four. Okay. And yeah, with my rook coming in, it certainly doesn't. It certainly is not going to be easy for white to defend this. Look at these yeah. beautiful pawns on h four and g three, Soumya. They just this king is suffering, huh? In the prison. Yes. Jail me, tihar jail me, dal diya hai with itne king ko. क्विकली Yes, let's Big. go. If the transmission is back, we would love to see what SL has done. Uh, let's see our boy, how our boy is doing. So, uh, yeah, we left it here, guys. Uh, A B five, A B five, rook eight, rook eight, and here, par white ne bishop e four kela, and this was black to move. That's why we could see the rook on A eight, rook B eight on the board, F five, E F five, bishop F three. Queen d7 खेला अच्छा knight g7 नहीं खेला black नहीं black plate you know what sl is doing he saying that this bishop even if you take bishop into h5 i don't care i'll take g into h5 i'll bring my knight to d5 maybe i'll bring my rook via d6 and rook g6 this is a very interesting oh. plan and actually it might seem that okay my king is weak but guess what your king is weak as well so Yeah, this is definitely looking great. So instead, instead of bishop into h five, white, uh, white didn't take. He didn't think that this was a great idea. I guess. Yeah. Four bishop d six d eight on the board. So, so S L is currently a pawn up, and. I really like his position because I don't see how White makes use of his two bishops here, Soumya. Yeah, certainly, Abhimanyu. I I like this position for Black as well, and uh, it's one of those positions where the bishop pair is actually much weaker than the pair of knights. Ah, uh, even though it's a open position, I think it's one of those exceptions, ah, uh, to the general rule because. 
uh, and I feel the reason is first of all material, second of all peace activity, and third of all weak king. So pawn structure, even the, uh, I mean, um, yeah, the weak king and the uh, the king being weak is like the biggest um, positional disadvantage that you can have in your position compared to any other positional disadvantages. Completely agree with you. Uh, Sanjay ji is saying, Sanjay Mistri is saying, what happened with Hans's clothes? Did he change? No, probably he was just feeling cold. Uh, so he just wore a blazer of sorts. I don't know. Yeah, he's wearing a blazer now. <laughs> that would be hilarious <laughs> if someone just went to the washroom and changed his shirt because the previous <laughs> one was not working out too well, you know. <laughs> That's a great suggestion, actually. Yeah. Do you, like we all have lucky clothes, I guess, which we wear. So, not a bad idea. It should be allowed, ah? Huh? At least a shirt you can carry in case you get into a horrible position. You can go and change into a lucky shirt. <laughs> so, Mia, by the way, do you want to go to Vidit's game because Vidit is in time yes. pressure? But it could be. It is over yeah. actually, right? Yeah, let's let's just go. We could actually see with it bringing in the much needed win in this game. Wow, what a huge advantage for Vidit here. Mm. This b3 pawn beautifully placed to be queen and rook a7 coming in the next move. A7 per pahunch kar bhi is ka koi zyada fayda nahi hua. Hey, Vidit has gotten up. I think he has won the game. Yeah, he won the game because fight literally can't move so much. This king on Jion, Bishop on f1, they are completely on. So I guess there's just nothing White can do. So Hans oh, resigned. Oh, what, what a, a great result! Fantastic result and what a beautiful game by with it. This is such a model game. I'm sure tomorrow someone or the other a lot of channels are going to make a video on this game explaining how beautifully with it has played. And you can probably expect one on our channel as well. Beautiful, beautiful game here by with it. Uh, kudos and played so well in a game that counts. Yeah, it, you know, today was very important. And yesterday, of course, it, the games, okay, the second round turned out to be quite miserable for India. But you know, it's, have you seen Rocky, Soumya? Yes. It's not about how hard you get hit, but you know, the how you come back from it, that really matters. And Vidit is certainly showing why he is the captain. Yes, and do you know whom I watched Rocky with, Vidit? <laughs> yeah, probably he remembered that, okay, I watched Rocky with Soumya, so I have to come back <laughs> I, now. I, I, <laughs> Don't want to disappoint Soumya, so let's go. <laughs> also watched Rocky. <laughs> this is great news for India. Yeah, so looking at SL's game, yeah, so he has a great position. He's pawn up. Uh, yeah, I think maybe one of the ideas what he's trying to do is if White moves his bishop to let's say g2, knight e4 is a possibility. Attacking this d6 bishop and your knight is coming to d5 next and oof. This looks very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. I'm attacking. I'm going after the C3 pawn. I'm going after your king sometimes. I mean, I'm really loving yeah, SL's position. And actually, the first threat is to just take up one more pawn now huh? after take and queen d6. Yeah. We'll be two pawns. Just simply yes. take the pawn. Take yes. the pawn. Uh, what so, kind things of are looking player up. is SL? Abhimanyu. Uh, I know that you did say he was an opportunist, but in terms of, let's say, uh, positional or dynamic chess, which style does he usually go for? He's a universal player. So he can play oh, positional right. chess. He can play slow positions. He can play, you know, completely aggressive chess as well. He's very, he plays according to position. He doesn't, he's not someone who will play very rashly or very positionally, very, you know, Holding everything back. He he just plays according to position. That's his style. 
it's a huge asset to have as a chess player and that's something all chess players aim for bishop g2 he answered with f4 he did not go for knight e4 but he simply wants to checkmate with f3 um i think f4 also i like but can white play queen d1 now and prevent f3 queen f5 khel sakte hai fir hum aur f3 we will force yeah. white to play f3 and close his bishop again the bishop will be a prisoner behind its own pawns and he, uh, the king even more so so uh, yeah i i like yeah. f4 as you know well. so me what i'm thinking what i'm mm. thinking sometimes you know if you move your queen away you can just slowly tickle from the side playing something like knight a4 yeah yeah knight a4 yes tickle, yes white. yeah definitely and why is being forced to go back and yeah and you can even go knight b2 knight d3 in case let's say the queen is on d1 yeah sl getting up from the board he sl you know one one of the things about sl he always looks like a hermit you know sadhu baba yeah he looks sadhu like a sadhu baba, baba yeah sadhu so baba and he yes, sadhu also, baba sl his opponent has one and a half minutes and sl has a huge time advantage as well bahut unda position mein unke paas bahut zyada time bhi hai agar ye um, crushing nahi hai to kaun si position crushing hogi yeah this is great stuff for uh, so do you want to look at uh, quickly look at setu's game setu yes because that's the only game we were slightly concerned with but still we uh, are okay with by the way i have a phone uh, alarm set for 8 pm every tuesday reminding me about title tuesday <laughs> and it just ran. yeah uh, that will be uh, that will be the tournament uh, it's always exciting to play and see title tuesday it's just a great <laughs> event so um, rook d f8 rook f1 f into e4 yeah of course we need to switch the board say to is white here f e4 bishop e4 knight f6 hua bishop f3 rook g8 rook e1 bishop g4 rook f2 bishop f3 rook f3 rook g2 rook e2 rook g1 king d2 king d7 um kafi equal position even though uh, yes yes i do agree white is the only one who needs to be concerned here black ke to weaknesses hi nahi hai par fir bhi ye mujhe equal hi lag rahi hai baar kuch bhi bole yeah the concerning so, part is for example yeah rook g3 can run into something like rook f1 perhaps the thing is uh, what i don't like about white's position uh-huh. is it's not easy to make moves and in rapid uh, you need to have a clear plan you need to know how to exactly continue like let's say you want to rem- you can't move this b3 knight because always you'll run into knight d4 here moving c3 knight also doesn't seem like a option and these knights i, I, I don't like setu's knights here that's the main concern for me i agree agree if the knight was on f2 for example instead of c3 but then even yeah maybe it would have been more useful because it would have control more squares but then d5 square again you give up yeah this pawn structure is not very healthy let's see how setu handles yeah. it uh, rook h3 is it an option yeah but you just defend with h5 i guess one more it's uh, not really resulting in anything yeah yeah somehow it like for example let's make some moves here and see rook h3 h5 rook g3 we go rook f1 attacking f4 we go check black goes back king c8 and there is no way to act further attack c7 because the knight on c6 is a great defender and how do we support the pawn we can't this yeah. is uh, yeah yeah definitely concerning but uh, yeah let's see what uh, setu will choose uh our beater seems to be speaking to vidit uh-huh. uh, that yeah oh. you cannot watch the games from your opponent side yes yes this is a new rule yes, uh, yes. uh which was introduced in olympiad uh, 22 i think that uh, you always have to be behind your own team to watch the game so as to no, uh, as a fair play measure you know so that no communication can be made to your teammates um so yeah that was what the arbiter communicated to vidit 
So Setu actually plays rookie one, which I feel is a good move. You want you don't want that rook lingering around in those G one areas, you know, causing you problems always. So he's trying to exchange it. Also, make square up for e two on e two for your knight, na protect f four later. Yeah, I like this move. And rook g four played. So will we also double on the f pile? I mean, very passive, but uh, let's check. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's next possible. move we can play rook g three because. I want to play h3 one move. I don't know. I just have this instinct that I want to kick things, and so that's why I want to kick this rook further away somewhere. I don't know where. So I feel h3 is something <laughs> which Setu will be considering. Yeah. Okay, man, you're still in football mode. He wants to kick, <laughs> now kick away the pieces. Uh, h3. But the problem why I was not. I was hesitating to push h3 is because then I never have this rook g3 idea and exchanging the rook. I mean, I can just say bye bye to the g file forever. That is true, Samya. But the thing is, I really don't know what to do here with that. I what I see is this rook on g4 is very well placed. It's attacking. It's causing white problems from all sides. So I want black to make a decision and to where to put this rook because from g4 it's also attacking this f4 pawn. Maybe you can go. Rook G two sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know again. Uh... So yeah, this is uh, Rook E F one on the board. Setu and me seem to be in sync. He wants to play Rook G three on the next move. Maybe Black can prevent it with Rook F G eight here. Black definitely has an advantage. We can hope for Setu to defend it. I mean, it's not. A completely lost position or something. Material is equal. Everything is equal. It's just that black has a positional advantage in this uh, game. Um, let's go to Nihal's game quickly and see what's yeah. happening there. Oh uh, wow! Nihal is actually a pawn up. Arya, so we can probably expect a win in this game also. Still, it's. Uh... <laughs> Still, uh, okay. This is an oppo opposite color bishop uh, end game, and it's always very, very drawish. So the, a lot of work is to be done. But this is still great progress because this means that Nihal can win or draw, and both are honestly good results for the team at this point. Yes. Uh, he played rook f one, by the way. Uh, with the, it's not a blunder, guys. King into f one will go. Bishop d3, King f2, and Bishop into c4. We pick up the rook, and a bishop, opposite color bishop endgame will be quite a uh, comfortable draw. Or rook. will it be? It will be right because g4. Oh, uh, sl1, yeah, sl1. Oh SL1? my god! Look, hey, look at wow. Where is the game? Oh yeah, they are uh, rearranging the pieces. Let's just go. Let's just go there. Oh wow! This is amazing. So Nihal definitely at least a draw, and we have won the match. F three, knight d five, h four was played. Knight e six, bishop h three, knight e three, rook f two, queen d eight, h four cannot be saved anymore. Bishop e six, f e six, rook h two. The only way to save h four, rook eight. Wow! As you said, uh, Bhiman, you SL a universal player playing in. Going all in now. Queen a8 and rook a1 is the threat, and also queen into f3. Wow! Just queen wow! And queen a8 and black white has resigned because there is just no way to prevent rook k1, and the queen will be lost. This is beautiful. This is we such a good game, through. yeah. This is a yes. fantastic game. Both of them, I think, SL and BD played model games today with black pieces and came on top. Fantastic chess by both of them, leading the team, carrying the team into the quarterfinals. This is just amazing to see, yeah. So, yeah, like before the games, yeah. we are predicting that okay, white, the both the whites yeah. will try, but see what happens. You can never predict, really predict chess, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, Setu also seems to be like so many mm, playing very fast. They both are in time pressure, so let's just go there quickly. Rook e f1, knight e7, knight d4, c5, knight d2, knight f5, rook h3, b5, knight g3, knight into g3, hg, b4, knight e2, h5. This is the current position. Um, 
it's extremely passive but defendable that's what i would say yeah and more than that i'm seeing the time so okay setu has one less minute than his opponent but this is a time scramble and as we know anything can happen in these time scrambles so yeah this is although i would say that setu is worse this is certainly a game because this is a pure time scramble yeah for sure and what about nihal let's go there what happened there he went king g2 he did not take the rook he's maintaining the rooks because it you get it gives you a higher chance of winning the end game white is a pawn up white is trying to win bishop d3 rook d4 rook d1 king f2 bishop c2 that's the position on the board oh so already maybe rook b4 he'll go now so that you yeah. can allow rook f1 yeah rook b4 on the board and now rook f1 is not possible and you are threatening to b6 at some point or maybe even to b7 and g5 yeah rook b7 g5 is a plan okay you give up the f5 pawn but at some point you can go rook b7 rook a7 and g5 let's say let's just make some moves like uh, just to illustrate and we go rook a7 and you play bishop d3 and i can play g5 here yeah this is a uh... Take, yeah, this take, is certainly possible. Six and now you can't stay at this f six pawn, and I'll be two pawns up, and I'll I am probably winning. I mean, this is still difficult, but a very uh, good chance to win. You know, Soumya, uh, like uh -huh. I feel that both if Nihal draws or wins, it's probably uh -huh. the same for the team. But uh -huh. I really want Nihal to win because this will do wonders because he isn't having a great tournament so far, uh -huh. but. He certainly, you know, his Nihal. We saw the way he played in the Global Chess Championship. He's he's the tiger, yeah. So he'll certainly want to strike as soon as possible and get into the groove while yeah we, while we are headed to the knockouts, which seems very likely at this point. Yeah, definitely. And momentum makes a difference, you know. Like where once you get the momentum in, uh, uh, you are in good mood. You are feeling confident. You have got that one win in, you know. you're not doubting yourself anymore that makes a difference certainly certainly it does um so, yeah neels is asking do they need better game points or something or nihal should just draw no they don't actually need better game points but nihal cannot lose this that's the reason he's playing because he's the only one who can win this game and he can take a draw any time that's why he's trying to play and uh, win and at some point if he feels oh rook d4 he played so ah. <laughs> <laughs> as we were discussing he's he's being like super practical he's like okay let's just get the team win in you know <laughs> yeah makes sense you know you just want to yeah <laughs> win for the you know do it for the team have a good rest and come back again tomorrow with yeah. full energy so makes sense yeah yeah definitely i think both uh, the Uh, decisions would have been perfectly valid to try and to take a draw and, and yeah okay fine this is totally fine oh that's yeah. great so so this is headed towards a draw now do you want to yeah. look at setu's game if he's Let's able to go. hold oh he's a pawn down actually so we left it here uh -huh. and oh he probably lost this pawn on f5 fine ha because rook f4 will be met with knight d5 okay that's what happened so he lost the pawn uh yeah so now white will try to exchange as many pawns as possible so that he... yay let's go yes yes so we are through guys we are through this is great stuff this is great stuff yeah so nihal has made a draw and yeah that's awesome Congratulations to our team for making it to the quarter finals. We don't know what place they will finish in, and that's why we will get to know the pairing for the quarter finals only once all the games are over. Um, but yeah, we are definitely through. We'll play two matches tomorrow in the quarter finals, and uh, if uh, the both the games are tied, then there is a tie break. So yeah, this is the format basically. Um, Uh, how it works is the uh, winner of pool a will play against fourth place of pool b so
so let's say we finish third or fourth in pool a we will play against let's say we play uh, finish in third place then we play against runner up of pool b and if we finish fourth then we play against the winner of the pool b so let's see ah sorry we are in pool b so uh, can we get the regulations again we are in pool b so we finish third then we play runner up of pool a and if we finish fourth then we play winner of pool a whoever it is and yeah the quarter finals will be at 6 pm tomorrow the first match against the same team we play two matches each one with white on top board and one with black on top board and if both the matches are tied then we go into tie breaks a uh, blitz tie break of 3 minutes and 2 seconds increment nice yes guys india op ho jaye chat mein i'm seeing this and it's india op ho jaye chat mein gg vidit gg sl gg nihal this is great great stuff from the all the team uh, players and yeah i'm just very excited soumya yeah and i really want setu to draw this i feel he has a chance dekho bahut kam point uh, kam pawns bache hai to let's say सारे पॉन्स एक्सचेंज हो जाएंगे और ब्लैक के पास एक एक्स्ट्रा पॉन्ट रहेगा उसके लिए हम हमारा नाइट दे देंगे और फिर ड्रॉ कर लेंगे तो ये भी अगर ड्रॉ हो जाएगा ना तो सेतु आल्सो गेट्स दैट कॉन्फिडेंस बूस्ट एंड वी रियली नीड हिम इन द फोर्थ कमिंग राउंड वी नीड ऑल आर प्लेयर्स टू बी रेडी टू प्ले टू बी इन द राइट माइंड सेट फॉर द क्वार्टर सेमीज एंड द फाइनल सो आई होप ये गेम भी हमारे फेवर में आ जाए एंड He played B4, which I really love. Like you said, you want to exchange more pawns to yeah. defend, and yeah, actually, I, so both the players are in time pressure as we see. Mm-hmm. Actually, Black has just fourteen seconds, guys. Fourteen seconds. So it's definitely not easy for any side to convert with so less time. Yeah, King C2 maybe. so uh soumya so we should so tomorrow india is playing quarter final mm. so if and when india wins what will you do yeah. we need to have some sort of a challenge right ha theek hai chalo so do you want to have a challenge for quarters or for the finals or every step like quarters every and- step every step will have a challenge what do you okay. say okay chalo so Kya let's karogi? say uh so finals we had decided what we are going to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's keep it as a surprise for the chat uh, that is a surprise uh so quarters ke liye so even if one of us is not available for commentary uh, we should anyway do it ha huh, that day yeah yeah okay that will figure out we figure out how to do it yes quarters ke liye let's say let's take suggestions from the chat chat aap kuch dare de do हम दोनों को एंड uh, या जो भी होस्ट होगा वो वो डेर पक्का करेंगे अगर हम क्वार्टर्स <laughs> जीत गए सो मैं इमेजिन इफ इट्स अ डिफिकल्ट डेर एंड वी बोथ आर नॉट कमेंटेटिंग दैट वुड बी एपिक वी गेट टू चूज ऐसा नहीं है कि चैट ने बोल दिया और यार लाइक या अभी आपका वी गेट टू चूज देयर गिव फ्यू सजेशंस ना उसमें से थोड़ा एक्सेप्टेबल डेर नहीं नहीं सो मैं जैसे मेहमान भगवान होते हैं वैसे चैट भी भगवान है हमारे अरे <laughs> ए दिस इज कंप्लीटली ड्रॉ ए देखो हम बात कर रहे थे डेर की एंड ऑल द पॉन्स गॉट एक्सचेंज वो ड्रॉ होने वाली है अभी या दिस इज फैंटास्टिक अभी तो ये ड्रॉ पक्का ड्रॉ होगी नाइट डी3 एंड नाइट इनटू सी5 एंड जस्ट ड्रॉ या सो रुक नाइट वर्सेस रुक गाइस दिस इज सपोज्ड टू बी अ वेरी होल्डेबल एंड गेम एंड आई एम श्योर सेतु विल होल्ड दिस सो ही प्लेस नाइट डी3 is going uh, towards he is going to take the c5 pawn and it is going to be a draw drawn end game so i dare you to dance i dare you to cosplay i dare you to eat mirchi soumya oh god no oh god. i can eat mirchi i can eat mirchi if i am commentating cosplay is you know what is prudhvi so i i would like to cosplay but <laughs> i don't know if people will <laughs> if it's possible what, for me what even is cosplay i don't even know someone needs to explain it to me so cosplay is uh, basically when you dress up as some character and you dress up in a very you know like just like the character 
So that is basically so you can cosplay on anything basically. Some character just. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, like okay, fine. Okay, costume. Like fancy dress. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> cosplay is just an adult fancy dress. Adult <laughs> version of fancy dress. भाई कॉस्प्ले तो मैं करूंगा पर क्या मैं मतलब ओके ओके आई आई ट्राई टू सी फिगर समथिंग आउट एंड आई विल कॉस्प्ले इफ इंडिया विंस बट आई हैव टू फिगर समथिंग आउट क्वार्टर्स के लिए क्वार्टर्स के लिए अह या क्वार्टर्स के लिए कॉस्प्ले यू वांट टू डू वेट्स अह आईज विदाउट ब्लिंकिंग ओके आई शुड बी ह्यूमन भावेश प्लीज आई हैव टू ब्लिंक टू लिव Uh, yeah. Cosplay is cool. It's just that uh, moment pe, like humne pehle hi prepare karke rakhna padega na hamara character. Yeah, and it's not that easy. You have to prepare a lot for cosplay. You don't want you... to do it like in a half, half. Uh, what to say? Uh, yeah, you don't want to just do something for the sake of it. So it will be very difficult. Abhi Manu or says so. My eye blinking competition. Oh my god. Okay, that too we can do for sure. <laughs> uh yeah i can eat mirchi i can eat mirchi if you guys want because i eat it anyways so. <laughs> eat kaka raya bssc chess is in eat kaka raya kai okay saumya can sing if india wins that is also a very good suggestion yeah saumya Yeah, sure. That I can do. So I can sing, and you can eat mirchi. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I will sing, and I will eat mirchi, and uh-huh. I will see what hurts more. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh God! This is also fun, dear. Habi man, you can commentate in a high pitch voice. Oh, my God! The reverse. This is an actual dear. <laughs> like, oh my God! Oh God! This is an actual dare. Okay. You guys yeah, are creative. Yeah, we can do that. Really fun. Yeah. So that okay, I should have some fun. practice. Okay, okay. I'll try commentate commentating in a high pitched manner. Yeah. Huh. So Rook A three check. Oh my God! He's checking the Black King now. Maybe. ये dare था अभी मन्नू अगर हम कल जीतेंगे तो आज ही नहीं करना है. India has won the match and we are back at it. <laughs> oh, India is. Oh, I have to be low pitch. India is through to the what? Cal quarter final. India is through to the semis, guys. This is not low pitch, no. I don't know I how to do it. I guess it's not possible for you to India speak is... in a low pitch. And we do have a result, guys. Setu has managed to draw the game, and we are through. We are back at it, and we are firing again. So, yay! That's so, awesome. Setu OP, Nihal OP, SL OP, and with it, and Shashi and Abhijit. What a fantastic team effort! Of course, Vebhusuri OP as well. Amazing. We are through to the quarters. Yay! That's amazing yes. news. Yes. क्या खेला है हमने आज? मस्त. बहुत ही मजा आ गया. दो डाल आई USA को. Yeah, yeah. It was a great match. It was a very uh, clinical match, and I was okay. With it, OP, SL OP, like you said. and everyone in the team they all you know this is just this just feels so nice that we are through because after yesterday's game we needed to bounce back guys itna easy nahi hota life mein kuch bhi easy nahi hota par haarne ke baad bounce back karna to aur bhi difficult hota hai ha aur wo humne kar dikhaya hai main to bahut hi must feel kar rahi hu hamare team ke bare mein kya must aur yeah yeah feeling really great bhai you in abhishek in the chat is saying soumya's internet hurts the most oh that Uh, that pains so me. A producer will agree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want to have a l- quick look at uh, what happened in the other uh, games so that we see the standings? Yeah, let's do that. So, uh, yeah, okay. who were in our group? Let's just have a look. Um, we had Uzbekistan versus Poland and. Uh, Azerbaijan versus Israel. So let's look at what happened 
and Azerbaijan versus Israel. Uh, Azerbaijan won against Israel two and half, one and half. Uh, Mamedarov won his game against Maxim Rothschild, that uh, excellent uh, exchange sack game that we saw. And then uh, Raja unfortunately lost. He actually lost the fourth round as well and today as well. So he really needs to come back. And then Gusena won the game. So that's uh, uh, for Azerbaijan. And fourth board was a draw. So Az Azerbaijan uh, beat Israel. And uh, the next one was Poland. Poland versus Uzbekistan. Let's see what happened there. Uh, Shamsuddin won. Uh, Wakido drew. And uh, what about the other players? So Ab it it it, uh, it ended in a draw because Abdullah their fourth lost. board. Huh. Yeah, the Uzbek fourth board lost the game, so it is a draw. But I guess Uzbek was first, so they are through. Hmm. So is Azerbaijan because they are second and they won. Then India is ah uh, so India is third, and uh, Poland is fourth. So. Great stuff, guys. We have qualified for the next. Uh, oh, fantastic. So we will play. So we, we finish third and we will play the uh, second uh, placed uh, team in the group A, right? Yes, runner up of group A. Right. So, so who's who that? will that be? Is, is, uh, are the standings up? Let me just check. Uh, ranking So India will play France. France. Okay. MBL. MBL. Max. MBL versus VD. MBL versus VD, guys. MBL versus VD. Ah. Kya hi matchup hai? Maza I think uh, Kali decide okay, but anyway, you will get one white and one black. So each of the players will get one black. Um, M uh, France ki team hai MBL on the top board. Jules Mossad on the second, Laurent Fresinant on third, Tiger Garamian on fourth, and Maxim Lagarde on fifth. So they actually have only um, five players, is it? Or they probably haven't fielded their sixth player yet. Uh, yeah, they only have five players actually. Yeah. Yeah, great, great match. So it will be very interesting. Like you said, yes. MVL versus PD. And Maxim Vachar Lagarde, guys, is one of the top elite players. He's uh, an extremely strong player. He was number two in the world before. And he's just a great, great player. And he'll he'll play against our Indian boy who just scored for us, VD. And it will be a very exciting matchup, Soumya. Definitely. And I'm so thrilled with the way we have played today. No losses, two draws and two amazing wins by our boys. Kya must, must, maza aya aya. Uh, games follow karne ko and to see our... Uh, team come through when it matters. Tomorrow, uh, the quarters start at 6 p.m. So do join us for that. Don't forget to join us. Let's cheer the Indian team through and through to the semis and then to the finals as well. Kal do matches on the quarterfinals. Ke. By the way, uh, iske baad bhi hamari aur ek stream hai hamari channel pe with Srinath. It's titled Tuesday coming up at 9.15 p.m. So uh, please join Karege Srinath, ke, Srinath ko. I think he will also play in the tournament and he will also stream it. I don't know how he does it, but he does a fantastic job of it. That much I can assure you. So do join him at 9.15. Guys, quickly have your dinner and come back. Bye-bye. It was great. Great to commentate with Maza you. Gaya. Maza gaya. Maza gaya, Maza gaya. It was great to commentate with you and it was great to see India win. Yes. And... It was Guys, that's why chess dekhna, soccer you can see in the future. You can see it in the future. You can see it in the future. Okay? See you guys. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> <laughs> and have a great night. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. See you tomorrow.